In this video I'll be doing a review of Rebellion Linux. Now it's a commercial distribution, but bear with me here, it's actually a very cheap commercial distribution, only costing 5 US dollars, which for me worked out as about £3.30. Now they're offering lifetime support with the distribution, and in fact I did have to contact the developer about a small issue of installing the distro, and he did get back to me very quick, so I was quite impressed with that. It was within, I think it was actually less than one hour he got back to me. That's very good. Now there's two flavours of Rebellin, we've got the Synergy and Adrenaline. Synergy, which is the one I'm reviewing here, is based on Debian Stable. Then the Adrenaline is based on Debian Testing. I would imagine that Synergy would suit more the business user or home user who's not necessarily too interested on being on the most up-to-date system. But there are quite a few tweaks on this system in keeping it more up-to-date. As you can see here we've got a newer kernel, it's kernel 3.2. But with that, we've got the old classic GNOME 2.3 desktop. The developer has also done some tweaks in lowering the memory usage. Although you see here, this is using around 700 meg of RAM, please bear in mind that I am recording the distro whilst reviewing it. Yep, full system install here. But at idle, it was around 250 meg of RAM, so that's fairly low. Now you might be thinking, why would I go for this distribution instead of just creating my own out of Debian, which is after all all this system is? Well, let's think, Debian is a bit of a nuisance really in setting it all up. And there are various repositories you need to enable in Debian to get more of a selection of software. Debian are very much on the ethos of free open source software only, which is all well and good. However, what about the user who would like the best software for their system? As you can see here, I've gone and installed the NVIDIA graphics drivers and that there is Adobe Flash installed. There is also quite a nice theming in this distro. You've got the blue gradient effect on the highlighted menu item. Whilst talking about theming, you can see there is Compiz installed on here. Hey, do like Compiz. Takes me back a bit being able to do the old desktop cube. And just for the sake of it, you can draw fire on the screen. Oh yeah. For no apparent reason. It doesn't help productivity at all, but it is good. <laughs> it is a good laugh. As you can see, I've got other animations enabled. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, you got Compiz installed. Wonderful. It was a bit tricky getting it up and running though, but the developer has put a guide on the internet site. Opening up the web browser, instead of going to the homepage, it's gone to this page, which has given you a few links to various websites. Yeah, I'm not keen on this. I wanted it to go to the homepage, like. I'm not sure what they've done there, but I would rather just go to the page that I'm used to. By all means, put that page on for the first use, but I want to be able to customise my home page for what I want on the browser. Looking at the applications that are installed, under accessories, just about the usual assortment of accessories we'd expect to see. Under games, you've got all the basic GNOME games installed. Under graphics, you've got GIMP, Inkscape, LibreOffice Draw, Raw Therapy, an advanced photo development program, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Xane Image Scanner. Under Internet, we've got Deluge BitTorrent Client. That's good to see. Deluge is my preferred torrent client. Ekiga Softphone, talk to people over the internet. Hmm, I was trying to play around with that earlier, but wasn't really sure what I was looking at. The Empathy Instant Messenger Client, as you've seen, the Epiphany Web Browser, Evolution, Firefox, Liferer e Feed Reader. Remner Remote Desktop Client and Skype. Under Office, we've got the full suite of LibreOffice. Under Sound and Video, so we've got an audio CD extractor, Brazio Disk Burner, Cheese Webcam Viewer, GTK Record My Desktop, Xhaley Music Player, Jack Controller, Totem Movie Player, OpenShot Video Editor, Pulse Audio I Installed, Rhythmbox Music Player, Sound Recorder, and VLC music Media Player. Under system tools, or various system tools, but notable ones there, you've got Compiz, Fusion, a couple of disk utilities, a file browser, network utilities, and a system monitor, and a few things under universal access. Here's what I thought of, Rebellion Synergy at 1.5. So easy to use, uh, reasonably, I had to look at the manuals a couple of times. That was on how to install the NVIDIA drivers and Compiz, getting that up and running. But fortunately, the developer has put quite a nice instruction set on his website on how to do that. So that wasn't that bad, just had to read the manual and follow it. The ease of installation, there's a few technical questions on there, but that's kind of a feature with the Debian installer, not as easy as the Ubuntu installer. 
styling. Yeah, quite nice icon set on there and uh, nice custom themes that he's put on. Boot up speed, yeah, awful. About 40 seconds, that was not good at all for a Linux distro. But once it's up and running, responsiveness was pretty good. So it's open the average application in two or three seconds. A number of bugs, possible issue with the installer here. Could have been caused by me and how I did that uh, UNet boot in installer with the USB stick. But I got around that by using a uh, DVD. Not sure what happened there. Anyway, selection of pre-installed applications. I reckon that's pretty well spot on. Number of applications available, yeah, reasonable for Debian. So, good points. Although you're paying for the customer support, the developer actually got back to me really quick. So, like I said there, about within one hour or so. That was yeah, pretty good. And it's got quite a nice setup of Debian here with the classic GNOME desktop and Compiz on it. And it's also got uh, some proprietary repositories added, so you can install the likes of well, the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Uh, it's got Flash Player on there, so that's good. It's good to have a mixture of proprietary and open source applications there, best of both. And you have a good point there, it's a nice stable system, it's got the good mixture of new and older tried and tested applications. So, it's good. The bad points, as I mentioned there, the horrendously slow boot time, and also that annoying home page on the browser. Now if I set the home page of the browser, I expect it to go there, not somewhere else. But overall, considering this is a pay for distribution of $5, which I think is pretty well spot on for a good point to pay. You know, developers have got to eat. <laughs> you're paying for the support, which you're getting. So overall, I've given this distro a 78%. Thanks for watching, see you later.